Today on Wolf Pack Weekdays, I'm going to be giving you some less known Pokemon Go tips and tricks. Welcome back to Wolf Pack Weekdays. Like I said, today I'm going to be giving you some of the less known Pokemon Go tips and tricks because I've seen tons and tons of tips and trick videos, but some of the things that I know and I've learned and have seen aren't being put out there. So I want to talk about those specifically. So obviously there's the ones about, you know, where to go for gyms, how to do gyms, how to battle with people, how the gyms work, and Pokestops and how they reset and stuff. But I'm going to talk about ones that aren't so obvious. So Pokemon Go at its core is an easy game. You walk around, you find Pokemon, you capture them, you go to Pokestops to get resources, and overall you just go to gyms to battle and you have fun with your friends. That's the whole point of it. I've been obsessed with it, obsessed with this game. I'm not taking it as seriously as some people with like 14, 1000 level Pokemons and stuff like that, but I'm having fun with it. I'm doing it in my free time and I've learned a few things that are actually very helpful. So I'm going to talk about those. So the first tip I'm going to give you guys is known as the curveball. And what the curveball is, is basically when you're capturing a Pokemon. You're, you have your Pokeball at the bottom of the screen and you're usually flicking it at them. Well, if you want bonus XP, and this is really useful during your lucky eggs, which give you double XP, you start spinning the ball like this. And when it gets the sparkles around it, you throw it. If you do it when the sparkles are going and you hit the Pokemon and capture it, you get bonus XP. It's only 10 XP, but when you have a double egg, it's 20 plus the 200 you're getting from capturing the Pokemon, plus maybe a thousand from a new Pokemon. So it can actually add up pretty quickly and it's worth knowing how to do. The second one is basically evolving to level. See, in this game, you have to get candy by capturing more of that single Pokemon, whether it's the evolved version or not, and you use that candy also to level up. So. If you have, say, 67, and you need 50 to evolve, and this many to level up, and it's something you don't want for your team, like, if you don't want a Beedrill and you have a Weedle, this is what you do. If you have, especially when you're doing a Lucky Egg for double XP, if you're close to a level or you just need to get farther on your leveling up on your character, something good to do is to evolve Pokemon that you don't care about. So if you don't want a Beedrill, you don't care if you get it eventually, Evolve your Weedle into a Kakuna, you get XP for it. You can get a lot of XP for it. And it's really quick, easy to do, and it gives you plenty of XP. It's worth it. I did it last night, and I went from level 11 to level 13 in literally two minutes. It's worth doing, and well, I had a lucky egg going. Let me put a asterisk on that. I had a lucky egg going, so it was doubled. But still, it's so fast if you have extra Pokemon and the candy to get rid of use it because it'll get you your levels quicker and you need levels to get higher level Pokemon when you capture them so it works out pretty well the third tip I'm gonna give you guys is basically explaining how the footprints work on the Pokemon because this is not something that is widely known for some reason basically those footprints on your nearby listing are meters a hundred meters actually so three footprints is 300 meters in a radius so what sucks about it is that there's no directional like to point to and it gets very hard to figure out. So if you're at 300 meters, you have to go 300 meters in a 360 to try to find that Pokemon. If it's two, it's 200. If it's one, it's 100. And if there's none, it's like right on top of you. So that's how you judge it is 100, 200, 300. And you keep going out that way. It is possible to find 300 ones. It's just very difficult, it seems. I found a Hitmonchan, but I found it because I was walking in a straight line at a park and it showed up in front of me. It was complete dumb luck. It just happened to be southeast the way I was going because it could have been northeast, it could have been northwest, it could have been all over the place. So that's how it works basically, but it's still not an easy thing to do. So keep that in mind. The fourth tip I'm going to give you, speaking of parks, is that parks are where they want you to go. It seems like all sorts of parks, even the smaller ones, have tons of Pokestops, are a hotbed for a certain Pokemon that's not exactly easy to find, and they usually have like four or five gyms. So 
they want you to go to parks. They want you to walk around at the park, enjoy nature, and play Pokemon Go. What's wrong with that? I did it with my girlfriend at Fenton Park last or yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. It was awesome. I, we had a great time, and it was very hot, which was a downside, but it was still a lot of fun. And we got like 150 Pokeballs each from these Pokestops, because there was like 50 in a line. And we didn't even hit all of them. That's the crazy part. So go to parks. Hit the Pokestops. That's the tip. Because there are so many Pokestops, so many gyms, there's so much to do at parks, it's worth it. I'm actually going to go to my local park right after I get this, these videos done. And hopefully I'll be able to get some good stuff. The fifth and final tip that I'm going to give you guys is the daily bonus. And what the daily bonus is, and I'll try to show it to you, is basically at the shop, the shop, the center button, the top right corner, that little shield that's red for me right now, for some reason, I've had to tell five people about this. So I just want to throw this out there that there is a button that gives you stardust and gold, like the gold to buy things, like you have to spend real money on, based on how many Pokemon you have in gyms currently. See, what happens is either way you can get like 500 stardust <clears throat> and I think 10 gold. If you just go and grab the daily bonus without having a Pokemon in a gym. But if you have a Pokemon assisting a team's gym, it adds up. I've had three Pokemon in three separate gyms at one point, and I got 1,500 Stardust and 200 Gold. It was well over the worth, because $1 is 100 Gold. $5 is 550. It's, it's definitely worth it. And if you have even more in there, like four or five, I don't even know what the amount would be, but it's got to be astronomical. It's definitely worth it, and it's a daily thing. Every 24 hours you can do it, so it's definitely worth doing. Now, that's only a small portion of the tips out there that you can find, and I'm still learning about the game as I go, just like you guys. So keep that in mind that I may not have the information, and some of these may not exactly be correct. Like, everybody kept telling me that the evolutions were based on moves, but they're barely based on moves. It was supposed to be that if you have a swift EV and you evolve it, it's a Vaporeon. If you have a Body Slam, it's a Jolteon. If you have a Dig, it's a Flareon. But I literally just evolved a Swift Eevee and got a Jolteon. So, yes, it's more common for those to have those certain types, but it's not for sure. So, that's why I cut it out of this video. It's not worth saying. And some of this stuff may be not be worth it or not true. Who knows? But it's a learning process, and I'm just trying to help you guys out. So, let me know about your guys' Pokemon Go adventures. I'm doing another two pieces this week on Pokemon Go because I'm so obsessed with it. And... <clears throat> And I want to know what you guys are doing. How are you guys doing? What's your rarest Pokemon? What's your most powerful Pokemon? What color are you? Let me know something down in the comments with the hashtag WPW about Pokemon Go. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions for the show, use the hashtag WPW down in the comments or on Twitter. And your idea might just get featured on the show. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.